Native Americans have, have always had a very strong presence in this area, especially along the inland route and, and the mouth of the Sheboygan River because here we have bodies of water coming together. Those bodies of water, the Sheboygan River and the Great Lakes, would have an incredible impact on what would become Sheboygan. But it was a dying industry and salted fish that may have put it on the map back in 1844. Mackinac Island in the fur trade began to suffer. Now there were all sorts of people on Mackinac Island uh, and a couple people come over, uh, Alexander McCloyd and Jacob Sammons. McCloyd sets up a small upright water powered sawmill near where the paper plant is today. And the reason he was doing that, it had nothing to do with the fur trade, it was the changing economy and now fish were going to be exported from this area. But back in the day to export fish, you needed one thing. Making barrels might be the original reason why the place was settled, but it was soon discovered that we have such an incredible amount of white pine here. While the first lumber cut went to make barrels, it didn't take long for fortune-minded sawmill operators to realize what they had here, an opportunity. America was nation building. The demand for lumber was soaring, and the supply here was seemingly endless. It was a great place to, to cut down that white pine, to float it down the river to the mills here, then the schooners could come up, load up with finished product, and head to markets like Chicago or Detroit and Cleveland. With standing timber everywhere they turned, sawmills popped up seemingly overnight and grew along with the town just as quickly. We peaked population-wise about 1896, and that was really the peak of the lumber era here. Sheboygan really looked like an old Wild West boom town. Um, first you start out with just the quickly constructed buildings, and then later brick and, and more substantial structures. But even substantial structures could fall victim to a fire, and Sheboygan would not be immune to their destructive powers. The most destructive fire uh, was in February 1923, um, when four business blocks, which are four main big buildings, were lost to fire. Sheboygan would rebuild and bounce back, turning its attention once again to helping the nation. The 40s we see a bit of a rebound, especially with World War II. There were some products that were manufactured here that were used for the war effort. Uh, by the mid-50s, things are looking pretty good. Uh, Charmin Paper Products comes to town in 55, and the following year it's bought out by Procter & Gamble. Sheboygan has long relied on the river to drive its industries, from sawmills in the past to tourism today. But the rest of the Great Lakes has relied on Sheboygan as well, and its Coast Guard ice cutters stationed here. It's important to see that in our community. It is um, it's something that helps keep the Great Lakes open to shipping, and to have it situated here in our community, uh, I think is, is, is absolutely fantastic. Today, Sheboygan is once again having to reinvent itself, overcoming some obstacles. But if history proves anything, this town has what it takes.